I'm Officer Jason Jimenez, J-A-S-O-N, J-I-M-E-N-E-Z. I'm the PIO for the Oak Grove Police Department. Around 11.06 this morning, uh, two of our traffic officers were doubled up in a patrol car. Uh, they were in this area of the 8,000 block of Orchard Loop Way when they encountered an individual. Technically, this is in the jurisdiction of the Sacramento Carolyn Sheriff's Department. So in regards to what occurred after that, I will turn it over to uh, Sergeant Hampton. So those officers at this point, uh, this is all preliminary information. This is still a very active scene. We're gonna tell you really what we know right now. And this being that it is in the jurisdiction of the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department, uh, the Sheriff's Department will be leading the investigation and will be working closely with the Elk Grove Police Department and their officers to determine what took place here. So upon the officers contacting the person, uh, the at this point he, he believes, or we believe that the, the suspect had an item in his hand. Um, during the contact at some point, uh, the suspect turned toward the officers. We believe at this point, uh, the officers fearing for their safety, one of them discharged uh, his firearm and the suspect was not hit. The suspect immediately surrendered and was taken into custody without further incident. Uh, thus far, as we are moving forward through the scene, we've located a large barbecue lighter uh, it, we believe the suspect possessed that at the time, but we're going to confirm that later as we review further video and other evidence such as the officer statements and witness statements in the area. So moving forward, we will be out here for quite some time. Uh, this area will be shut down for the remainder of the day. Uh, the officers and homicide investigators as well as our crime scene investigators will be working the scene and piecing together the details to provide to you later. Uh, at this point, uh, the Elk Grove Police Department will be placing their officer off on administrative leave per their standard protocol, and we'll be working together collaboratively. Uh, the Elk Grove Police Department's internal affairs will be working uh, and doing their parallel investigation into this, uh, this incident. So we don't have much more information to go on. Again, this is all very preliminary. This is what we know now. Could you describe a barbecue lighter? Is that the one that has the trigger? That's the, correct. And what looks like a barrel? That's correct. Yes, it is a, it is a dark colored barbecue lighter. Uh, it's the long type. Um, I would guess it, uh, estimate it to be about 10 inches long. Uh, but again, we're going to review more evidence, more video to determine if uh, that's what took place. Uh, again, this is all preliminary. Do you know at what, what distance uh, the officers were from the suspect? They were in very close proximity, it appears at this point. Um, I would say uh, less than 15, 15 feet, 20 feet. Uh, but again, we're going to have to look into that to confirm exact distances as this investigation moves forward. Do you know what drew attention to the suspect? Uh, we don't know that just yet because we haven't yet spoken to the officers other than to get a, a basic uh, public safety statement. Uh, but uh, we will we will certainly be looking into that to see what led up to it and what led them to this this contact this individual. The, the individual has been identified as a uh, thus far as a 25 year old white male. Uh, we don't have any other further identification on him. We will identify him later after he is booked at the jail. We'll be providing you that info depending on uh, when that occurs. Uh, uh, in a more general sense, you know, we have these OISs uh, the last few days uh, where people were killed, uh, either uh, victims or officers. Do you think uh, uh, officers are in a heightened uh, sense of awareness because of that? You know, I can't speak to that, really. Um, we as police officers, this is, this is an environment we've had to work in for many years. Uh, many of us have been in law enforcement for a long period of time, as well as the folks that have been involved in these incidents recently. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I can't speak to whether there's a heightened level of awareness. Our officers and officers throughout the country are always aware. Uh, there is a violent element to our society that we, we have to deal with, and it's very unfortunate that element actually exists, but it's something that we as police officers are tasked with, and we're tasked with pr protecting our communities. And that's something that, that we take great pride in and um, we're proud to do it. Just for clarity, was it one shot fired or do you know that? Uh, we believe it was one. Again, all preliminary at this point. We will know more later as this investigation moves forward. Could you speak to in general how training works when you, when you are in a, a situation where you need to engage like that? At what point is it okay to back off? In other words, how much leeway is there for someone to surrender in the moment of something? So it really depends. Every situation is dynamic. Every officer involved shooting, every shooting incident is very dynamic. And officers are tasked with making those split-second decisions. And those officers have to they have to react and they have to use that training. And that's why we train so much. Uh, I can't speak to this incident uh, as far as how officers react, um, but we we have to react if we perceive a threat because we're always going to be on the receiving end of that threat. We're not going to know the person's next move. 
We can't predict. Here you devote a lot of resources to finding out what happened. Is that standard in this case? Absolutely. You know, obviously, we had no one injured, one shot fired, yet you, you, you're going all out to find out what happened. Absolutely. This is something that um, every officer involved shooting and every homicide that I see you folks out on all of those, we dedicate a lot of resources to those incidents. Uh, officer involved shooting is just the same. Uh, we want to get the facts. We want to know what happened. We want to preserve the evidence to the best of our abilities and collect it and make sure it's collected and preserved appropriately. Do we know where the round hit? We don't yet. Um, we're still we're still trying to determine exactly uh, where that took, where that round went, uh, and where it ended up. As far as we know, there are no injuries as a result of that round being fired. Has the suspect had any past contacts with law enforcement that led to this morning? So we uh, we are aware of a few, but we're going to look into those and confirm a little more once we identify him. Uh, we haven't positively identified him yet, and we'll do that later through fingerprints. Uh, will his name be released later today, you think, or tomorrow? Or? It should be, yes. The booking process takes quite some time, and he will be interviewed. So there's a there's a, a process that has to take place, and an interview that has to take place, and then the booking process at the jail. So uh, it will be a few hours at least, uh, maybe maybe even tomorrow tomorrow morning. Can you give us your best understanding of where exactly this happened, since we actually have a clear view right now? So if you look uh, behind me here, uh, it's just on the other exit to the Firestone business there, there's actually another driveway, and that's the area where the incident took place. And then, um, I don't know which of you this would be the best question for, but how did this person come in contact with these? They, you said they were traffic officers, got that right? Yeah, there were uh, two traffic officers riding together uh, in one patrol car, and they observed the subject walking in that particular area. Okay. Do so you know if they had the contact, what like, the, initiated them yeah, stopping point, them? We're not sure. Uh, what led up to them contacting that individual? Uh, that's something that will come out during the course of the investigation. Are we good? Thanks, guys. Hey, you bet. Sure. We'll provide you an update as early as we can. Uh, try to get, some, get you some more information. Yeah. All updates from Sac County. Yeah, they'll come. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks, All right, so that is it from the scene. So you have heard it. Um, if you missed any of it, you can always go back and watch it from the beginning um, after I shut this off. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in. And um, luckily, there was not anyone hurt. So that's always good news. And as soon as they give out the suspect's identity, uh, I will be giving out that information on the Elk Grove Lagoon Forms Facebook page. So, all right. Thanks again for tuning in.